one or two can play the Bambino, and you're in total control of real-looking boxers. Introducing Game Boy. It's portable. It's in stereo. A scientist creates the ultimate machine. At last! A machine. I think one of my earliest gaming memories has to be when my parents gave me a grandstand tabletop game for one of my birthdays and uh, the game was Scramble and I'm sure a lot of you remember that, I'm sure a lot of you played that back in the day and it was a really great game uh, to have and just something completely new, so I just couldn't get my mind around how I was playing this game on this little, little arcade thing with its own little TV sort of built into it and uh, it really was uh, something that I was proud to own and I played it for days and days on end and uh, eventually one day I remember I got to what I thought was pretty much sure was the last level and I only had one life left, you only had three lives to get through the whole game and my heart started pounding the further I got into the level and my hands were getting sweaty and it was <laughs> making things extra difficult but I did manage to do it and it was the last level and I actually completed the game which was uh, one of my probably one of my proudest gaming memories today and uh, yeah really good sort of you know memories of that game really enjoyed that so the first arcade game i ever saw was a uh, sit down cocktail cabinet and it had space invaders on it and uh, me and my dad we were on holiday it would have been uh, mid mid 80s and we used to go youth hosteling and basically what that is is you uh you it was a generally a, a walking or we'd go cycling um, and we'd cycle uh, around a certain area and um, we'd stay in youth hostels they, they were cheap and and we always had a, a you know a, a nice nice time we'd spend the days out cycling and walking and then you'd come back and be so tired you'd, you'd go to go to bed so not quite level of hotels but um, you know it was popular when when I was a, a lad and um, one of these uh, youth hostels had a sit-down Space Invaders. And I remember seeing it and running over and begging for money. And I and just sitting, I think it was sort of 10p uh, a time. And I sat there for hours and hours while my dad, I think, was reading or went and got us some dinner or something like that. And um, I loved that. That was lots and lots of fun. Another early game in memory was uh, when... I think it was the Christmas after I got the scramble that um, what my parents used to always do is keep a, get a present back for me and my brother till after lunch. So Father Christmas always used to forget to leave us one present in the morning and we'd have Christmas lunch, go back into the living room and there'd be an extra present that he'd left. And uh, I remember opening up that, the present one year and it was uh, Balbino Boxing. Boxing. It's power, excitement, and strategy. And now it's all at your fingertips with Bambino, the boxing game with over 100 million computerized plays. Beat this electronic miracle, and you've beaten the best. Uh, which is another tabletop arcade machine, uh, obviously a boxing one. And uh, you had two players who could play it. You had two sets of controls on either side of the screen. And you used to press a button for high punch, low punch, and uh, try to bash the hell out of each other on this little game. It was uh, another brilliant game. One or two can play the Bambino, and you're in total control of real-looking boxers that can punch, duck, counter-punch, and go down for the ten count. Bambino boxing with over 100 million plays. Beat a Bambino, and you've beaten the best. The other arcade game I can remember seeing I don't think it was the, well I know it wasn't the first, but near uh, near where I live there was an ice rink and in the ice rink there was a, uh, like a little arcade section and um, one of the games they had there was, was Aliens on the uh, arcade and you play as Ripley and you, it's a side-scrolling game um, shooter, that was lots of fun. I can also remember the travelling fair um, that would, would come once a year. Uh, end of August, right before the sort of schools went back and you had to go back to school. And that had um, Operation Wolf, uh, Operation Thunderbolt, 
that had a, a, a Chase HQ cabinet, uh, Outrun. Um, I think it had a WrestleMania as well. That was uh, lots of fun. So I remember waiting for the fair to arrive and, and checking out sort of what new arcades they had then. Probably one of the coolest gaming gadgets I've ever owned and that my parents bought me um, was another after dinner present for Christmas and it was a Casio watch that had a game built in and uh, my brother had one as well I remember it was a motor racing game and uh, the one that I had was a football game and uh, it played a pretty decent game of football uh, for just like a little watch and uh, it really was portable gaming at its best because you know obviously you wore your watch wherever you went and uh, whenever you fancied a game of football if you're in the car on the way somewhere or in the waiting room you can just take your watch off and uh, sit there and have a game of football um, which I still had it a day, it was really good but an interesting story actually about the watch was that I went to an air show with a friend of mine and his family and uh, they said that 80s pop sensation Gary Newman was flying in a plane that he restored So as Gary Newman sort of went flying by in his plane, me and my friend said, oh, we're going to go and uh, chase after him and try and meet Gary Newman. And his brother said, oh, you're never going to get to meet him. Don't be so stupid. So me and my mate, we were quite fit by then. And uh, we legged it across this airfield and we got to this place where he landed his plane. And uh, it's probably about a group of uh, 10 other people, fans, waiting to try and get his autograph. And as he got out of the plane, everyone shouted, Gary, Gary, come over. And he came over. And they all had sort of albums and pictures and stuff they wanted him to sign. And not being a massive fan, I didn't really have anything I wanted him to sign. So I just said to him, I had a pen. I said, oh, Gary, can you just sign my arm? So he signed Gary Newman, uh, obviously, at my arm. And uh, as he did that, he noticed the watch. And he said, that's a pretty cool watch you got there. And I said, yeah, it's uh, got a football game on it. And uh, he said, oh, do you uh, fancy swapping it for my watch? I thought, ooh, yeah, I could have Gary Newman's watch here. It might be worth something one day. Um, I said to him, well, so what sort of watch is it? And he showed it to me. It's just a bog-standard digital watch. He said he picked up from a Texaco garage uh, after collecting some tokens. So uh, I thought to myself, no, nah, I don't think even though it's uh, Gary Newman's watch, I'll uh, stick to my gaming watch, thanks. I talk about my first video game, and it was a handheld game. I've got it right here to show you. And it's a Safe Buster which is a dual screen uh, handheld game. This is the box. And uh, as you can see, the box artwork is quite good. There's a, a guy, looks like a security guard, and he's uh, he's got some kind of contraption, and there's some madman there trying to uh, throw bombs at him. Let me show you what it looks like. I got this for a birthday or a Christmas, I can't remember. It would have been about 99, uh, 1988, around that time. Uh, this is the original one. Um, look, a couple of dents at the top of it, unfortunately, but it's been uh, been well used. Um, the rest of it's in good condition. I haven't got any batteries in it just because I don't want them to, to leak, but I've got batteries in case I uh, need to put it on. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like. It's nice and rare. There's a a left and right control and you basically control a security guard that catches bombs that are being thrown from the top screen and they, they run down and uh, the idea is that the bombs blow up the safe so that the guy can that the thief can go in and steal all the gold so yeah quite a fun game um, gets ridiculously complicated um, they chuck down multiple bombs at once so you, you can't obviously catch them all I found it really challenging um, yeah, it was good fun memory from my childhood. That's what it looks like. I think the first ever proper home computer game I actually seen running on a home computer was uh, on the ZX81. And uh, a friend of mine had this ZX81 computer that his dad had bought him and given him. And uh, he invited me around to have a look at it and he loaded up asteroids. And uh, up until then I'd been used to obviously sitting and watching TV, but the fact that you had this little triangle spaceship that you could actually by pressing keys manipulate around the screen and shoot the asteroids that were coming towards you just completely at the age of what well, must have been about 10 I suppose just completely blew my mind and uh, yeah that was the first proper computer game I've ever seen running and uh, it's just something else at the time you know 
Um, and then after that, there's other friends started to get uh, ZX Spectrums, the 48K ones, and uh, uh, another friend had a VIC-20, a Commodore VIC-20, and some other friends had Commodore 64s, and I think there was Amstrad's a few people had as well. I think it was because back in 1993 in North America, they had their sort of video game crash where all the consoles sort of like nobody wanted to buy them anymore because there was just so many of them on the market and uh, they'd been dealt a few crap games or quite a lot, a lot of crap games. And uh, in the UK, we never got that because we were all into our microcomputers by then. The first computer that I ever actually owned was a Commodore 16. Um, I've been wanting a Commodore 64, but my parents couldn't quite afford to get me one and uh, they were just a little bit too expensive and so I persuaded them one Christmas that they were going to be able to afford to get me a Commodore VIC-20. There are those who worry that video game playing can become obsessive. At Commodore, while we think that's a little extreme, increasing your game scores may not always increase your IQ. So Commodore's games come in a different package, a full-fledged computer, the VIC-20, that allows your mind to expand into the thousands of things a computer can do, in addition to playing games. And uh, then I went into my local WX Smith, picked up a copy of your Commodore, and across the sort of the uh, front of it was this new Commodore computer, the Commodore 16, and. Uh, it was going to be taken over from the VIC-20, the VIC-20 was going to be made obsolete and the Commodore 16 was going to take over. So I was, well, well, hope I, to my mum and dad, I was like, hope you haven't bought me the VIC-20 yet because uh, the Commodore 16 is going to be out before Christmas, so I'd like one of those instead, it's going to be about the same price. So that's what they got me and uh, it was a good computer. They said it was the best thing they ever bought me because uh, I was just continually on it every day, either playing games or trying to program it or trying to do something with it. and. Uh, yeah, great memories of that machine and the games on there. I remember probably my favourite games on it were, I think one was called Loco Coco, which was like a game where you had a guy that was on the roof of a train and there were sorts of things being thrown across at him and you had to duck and jump and make your way from one end of the train to the other. And the other one was called Blitz, and then my dad liked that one as well. And it was uh, a plane went across the top of the building and you had to drop bombs and blow out the buildings as you went across and try and blow them all up so that you could eventually bring your plane into land safely. Um, yeah, so uh, some great memories of the Commodore 16. Computer wise, um, as you probably know from watching this channel, my first uh, computer was an Amiga 500. first game that I ever bought for it I've got here and it is Chase HQ now I bought this um, from the my dad kindly drove all the way from our home in in Wiltshire to Leeds uh, to buy an Amiga 500 from a computer game advert in Amiga format and I think it was the, the best deal around even though he had to, we had to drive four hours to Leeds. Um, so we did. Uh, luckily, I think he had a company car at the time, so might not have had to pay for the fuel. Um, so that's probably why we went. And it, I don't know whether it was much cheaper than, than locally or not, but um, I remember him saying, right, let's, uh, let's go and get one. And we, we got a monitor as well, the, the Philips... Um, CM8833 Mark II. Um, I've still got that. And um, it was a Batman the movie pack. Pack. We also he also bought like a, a Perspex stand that went over the keyboard so you could put the monitor on top, which is quite a good feature. But I, I don't know how much we didn't have much money, um, so it must have cost my poor parents you know an arm and a leg. Um, back then um, but it was great and I was using it all the time every t as soon as I got home from school I'd be on it until until I got told to turn it off and go to bed 
Um, but anyway, back to the game. So this was um, bought in Leeds in the WH Smith. And um, this is a game here, Chase HQ, I'm sure you've uh, heard me talk about it before, or you, I'm sure you've probably played it yourself. But this is the, uh, the Amiga version. Uh, in, a, in a hard box. So it was in WH Smith, I can't remember how much. It would have been about £30. Um, um, I think I bought it with, with Christmas money. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a Mega disc in here as well, released by Ocean. Haven't tested it lately, but hopefully it will it'll work fine. But you never know, of course, with old uh, magnetic media. So yeah, there we have it. There you... So the first actual console I ever owned was a Sega Mega Drive. And... Uh... I think at the time I was still into my Commodore computers, I managed to save up enough money to put some money together with my mum and dad one Christmas to buy a Commodore 64. So I'm still really into my Commodore 64 gaming and programming. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Cause the Commodore is keeping up with you. In a world of fun and fantasy, and ever-changing views, and computer friend across the road from me said that his uncle had this new console. He said, you've got to come down and have a look at it because his uncle just lived down the road. So uh, that was a bit sort of dubious being a big uh, Commodore fan and uh, I think because I've been such a big Commodore fan I've never seen a Master System or the NES. Um, so he said, you've got to come down and have a look at this Mega Drive. So he dragged me down there eventually and uh, I was just blown away with the arcade style graphics. It was almost like having an arcade in your home. And uh, we used to, all the kids on the housing estate used to pile in down to his uncle's house and uh, play games like uh, obviously Sonic, uh, Road Rash, um, what else did we used to play? Uh, Streets of Rage, Golden Axe. On at Earth, a scientist creates the ultimate machine. At last! A machine that will give him the power to journey into the mega world. With thousands of colors, 16-bit graphic technology, and 10-channel mega stereo sound. The most advanced video game system in the universe. Yes! Mega Drive from Sega. And uh, eventually one day, though, this uncle rang me up and said, uh, Colin, he said, I'm thinking about getting rid of the Mega Drive. Are you interested in buying it? So... Uh, from a paper round money and birthday money, I managed to sort of get enough money together, I think, to uh, come to an agreement on the price of him, and I bought the Mega Drive off of him, and it's uh, the Mega Drive that I still own today. This is the very Mega Drive I bought, my very first one. And, uh, yeah, I still love, love a bit of Mega Drive today. Talk about well, my first ever console um, is here, and it is probably the, the, the same for most people. Um, of my era, and it was the Game Boy. They said it wasn't humanly possible, but now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Introducing Game Boy. It's portable, it's in stereo, and its games are interchangeable. Plus, Game Boy comes with the outrageous new game, Tetris. And for head-to-head -head competition, use the revolutionary video link and blow your opponent away. Game Boy, only from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power, portable power. Uh, 1989, I think, I received it. No, 1990 is when it came out. I, kept, I think I got it almost immediately. And uh, this is the uh, original one. The box is a bit tatty. Um, hours and hours I played on this, always. We used to, me and some friends would, um, in, who lived in the same street as me, um, we would sit and play two-player with the link cable. Such a great feature. Um, and Super Mario Land, we used to sit and play that for hours as well. And, of course, when you beat it once, you'd go through and beat it again. And uh, that's what the back looks like. Classic Game Boy. That was the original UK packaging. So that's about it for our early gaming memories. We hope you enjoyed the video. As always, don't forget to like, comment and most of all, subscribe. 
feel free to check out some of the other videos that we make, including the uh, series Car Boot Mayhem, where I visit the local car boot and uh, try and grab some bargains on retro games. And we also go back in time in a series of videos that we call Games Mag Flashback. And in these videos we go through some old uh, gaming and computer magazines and pull out some interesting articles and adverts to remember things of yesteryear. We'd really like it if you would get in touch with us. Um, we always like to hear your comments. We can be found on Twitter at Let's Talk Retro, also on Facebook.com Let's Talk Retro, and finally the website Let's Talk Retro.com. Until next time, remember what they've got to do, James? Keep it retro. We'll see you soon.